Hi everyone, I'm Anna, your cinephile host. Today I'd like to tell you about the movie The Help, an adaptation of Catherine Stockett's civil rights era novel about southern maids and their relationships with white employers. The setting is 1963 Jackson, Mississippi, where racial tensions start to rise between African-American maids and their white employers at the dawn of the civil rights movement. Through cruel words and arrogant gestures, privileged white women communicate disdain for their black help, while the maids quietly fume at the casual insults delivered almost daily. It's a well-acted, well-written, and quite excellent reminder of where we've been. So let's watch The Help, an uplifting reminder of how compassion, courage, empathy, and honesty have helped change the world. Welcome to Jackson, Mississippi in 1963, a place where African-American maids work in the homes of white women, cleaning, cooking, and raising the children. Most of them are treated shamefully and are forced to listen to nasty comments on their failings and derogatory remarks about the race, including charges that colored people carry disease. What is forgotten is the patience, loyalty, and tender loving care the maids give to the often neglected children of their employers. 23-year-old Eugenia Skeeter Phelan, a recent graduate of the University of Mississippi and an aspiring writer, attends a bridge game at the home of her friend Elizabeth. Skeeter's friends have all gotten married and started families, but Skeeter is disturbed to see how they treat their African-American maids. I got a job today. Where? Writing for the Jackson Journal. Great. You can write my obituary. Charlotte Phelan, dead. Her daughter, still single. Mother, would it really be so bad if I never met a husband? Skeeter! After refusing to use Elizabeth toilet because her maid Abilene uses it, Hilly, the leader of the women's social group, describes the home health sanitation initiative she hopes to get passed in the state legislature. The bill would require white-owned homes to have a separate toilet for the help. This conversation is conducted with an earshot of Abilene. Hilly has recently put her mother in a nursing home and dismissed her maimed Minnie. Minnie and Hilly never liked each other. Skeeter has been assigned to write the housekeeping column for the local newspaper. Because she has never had to do much housework herself, she asks Abilene for assistance. In addition to doing all the cooking and cleaning for Elizabeth's family, Abilene is the mother figure for Elizabeth's toddler daughter, May, for whom Elizabeth shows very little concern. Every day, Abilene tells May, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. Skeeter eventually conceives a writing project, a book about the lives of Jackson's maids. She describes the project to L. Einstein, an editor in New York, but doesn't receive much encouragement. Elaine doubts that any maids will agree to participate. Skeeter approaches Abilene about the book, but Abilene declines to be interviewed. But at church the next day, Abilene hears a sermon about courage and changing her mind and resolves to help Skeeter with her book. She tearfully recounts to Skeeter and Minnie the story of her son's death years before. At age 24, Abilene's son was run over by a truck at his workplace. The white foreman drove him to a colored hospital, dumped him on the ground, honked the horn, and laughed. By that point, it was too late to save him, so Abilene brought him home, where he died on a sofa right before her eyes. She becomes even more invested in the dangerous book project. Meanwhile, Minnie finds a job with Celia, the wife of Johnny Foote, Hilly's former boyfriend. Celia treats Minnie with respect, though at first Minnie feels uncomfortable. The two become friends. Celia suffers a miscarriage and reveals to Minnie that she has suffered three previous miscarriages. They hate what they think I did. They hate you because they think you white trash. Minnie comes upon Skeeters visiting Abilene and joins in the book project effort. But Ellen Stein, who's warming to the idea, insists the book will need more voices, including the story of Skeeters' own relationship with her former maid, Constantine. Every day. Every day you're not dead in the ground. When you wake up in the morning, 
You're going to have to make some decisions. You've got to ask yourself this question. Am I going to believe all them bad things them fools say about me today? You hear me? Am I going to believe all them bad things them fools say about me today? Who is new maid Yuli May explains to her employer that her twin sons have graduated high school and that she and her husband have been saving for years to send them to college. However, they are short $75 on one tuition and are on the verge of having to choose which son can go. The maid respectfully asks Haley for a loan, saying that she will gladly work for free until the loan is paid off. Haley refuses, explaining that it's the Christian thing to do because God does not give charity to those who are well and able. While vacuuming Haley's living room later, Yuli Mae finds a ring which she pockets, hoping to get the tuition money. Haley finds out and has Yuli Mae arrested at the bus stop in front of the other maids, all of whom are deeply shaken by the event. After Yuli Mae's arrest, nearly all the local maids volunteer to help with the book. Though she has changed the names of everyone involved, Skeeter remains concerned that people will recognize the maids and create more trouble for the African-American community. I, I, I've never met a woman, this is exactly what she's thinking. Well, I got plenty to say. Yeah, I'll bet you do. The book is published anonymously, and it is a success. Skeeter splits the advance she receives evenly among all the maids, promising that more is on the way. She is offered a job at the publishing house in New York, which she is declined to take, but Abelin and Minnie insist that she must. Celia works hard to prepare a big meal for Minnie in gratitude for all she has done. Celia's husband, who has known all along that Minnie is working for Celia, tells Minnie she will have a job with them for as long as she wants it. Inspired, Minnie leaves her abusive husband, taking their children with her. Hilly, falsely claiming that Abilene has stolen some silverware, forces submissive Elizabeth into firing Abilene. And still no silver. Maybe I can't send you to jail for what you wrote, but I can send you for being a thief. I know something about you, don't you forget that. But what you may say is a lot of time to write letters in jail. Plenty of time to write the truth about you. And the paper is free. Abilene snaps and finally stands up to Hilly, calling her a godless woman for her false accusations and backstabbing ways, at which Hilly bursts into tears of rage and leaves. As she walks away, Abilene promises herself that she will become a writer, as her son had encouraged her to do. I'd really like to interview you, Abilene. I know it's scary. They set my cousin Chanel's car on fire just because she went down to the Bolton station. A book like this has never been written before. Because there's a reason. I do this with you, I might as well burn my own house down. I promise we'll be careful. This already ain't careful, Mosquito. You're not known as what scared me the most. Scared me more than Jim Crow. The Help is a serious drama that also has plenty of funny moments. You will care for all these characters. You will find yourself trying to figure out the larger social contexts in which they live. You will worry with them, laugh with them, and best of all, celebrate with them. In addition to being entertaining, the movie functions as a time capsule as well as a lesson in American history, women's and civil rights. Hopefully you'll be able to learn some history and improve your English while watching this movie. For example, the main aim of the civil rights movement was to give everybody equal rights regardless of skin color, gender, nationality, religion, disability or age. When most people talk about the civil rights movement, they're talking about the protest in the 1950s and 1960s that led to the Civil Rights Act of 1964. See, you're already learning something. I'm your host Anna, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. You'll find many more on Fundy website.
Stay tuned.